morning. Happy Tuesday. Tiffany is off today. Katrina Cravey, our girl with a whole lot of charisma, is filling in for her. <laughs> what is up, Kat? Hey, Molly. <laughs> I'm good. How are you doing? I see that charisma sign over your shoulder, and I'm like, is that it? That's your label? Because you're you're somebody that has a whole lot of charisma. I try, but it's our company name, Charisma Q. But yes, it is the label. I mean. Charisma is something that, you know, you have as well. It's like that ability to attract people. You've got it in spades, my friend. Uh, thank you. But I am curious um, because it's your company name. Do you think charisma is something that you're born with that you naturally develop? Or do you think you can teach charisma? That is an interesting question. We believe that you can teach charisma. And actually, I just had a conversation with a professor from the University of Switzerland who is helping teach charisma, and that's what we're doing too. So I believe it can be taught. A lot of people think, oh, it's just something innate, like you just have it or you don't. But like, for instance, Molly, think about your family. Isn't there somebody in your family that was really charismatic and you learned a lot from them? Yeah, my younger brother. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, for me, it was my grandfather, like he didn't have like a big education, but he had this way of pulling in people and engaging others and caring about them. And so I think that we know it can be taught. It just is, it's a great conversation piece to have with somebody because there's a lot of people that doubt it. So at Charisma Q, we're all about teaching it. And we, uh, I could go on and on, but yeah. I think it can be taught. Uh, yeah, I think that's fascinating. But the, the interesting part about what you just said is, you know, attracting people and think it, people think it's all about your magnetic qualities. But you also said in there caring about other people. And I think that that's so true. And I'm sure that you back this up. If you express true um, empathy, if you if you're genuinely concerned about other people, you care about other people you're somebody who's gonna draw people because people like to be around people who care about them. Right, and it has to be authentic. So at Charisma Q, we have six components of charisma and one of them is empathy. And you have to understand other people and truly listen to them. I mean, nobody's gonna follow somebody who doesn't care about them or doesn't have the same vision that they do, right? So empathy is a huge component in charisma. I want to so, talk see, about you got it already. You already know, Molly. <laughs> right. I can teach it, right? I'm just kidding. I, hey, you just <laughs> let me know when you want to be a charisma coach and we'll bring you on. Well, I want to talk little about side, a little side hustle from the morning blend. Oh, I'm all about working with you would be a dream come true. I do want to talk about positivity in a second. But first, do you take, because this is going to kind of relate to what we're talking about, do you take baths? <laughs> What do you mean, the personal questions <laughs> that relates to what we're talking about? Um, yes, I used to love taking baths. Okay, now everyone's going to know like my little hidden secret. Our bathtub was leaking water and it was freezing during the winter. And I went downstairs and turned off the water just to the bathtub. And I haven't taken a bath in, gosh, two years. I got to go turn on the water again. How about you? No way. I, I don't take baths um, super often, but I do love them. And they're, they're talking about the fact that during um, COVID, during this, this pandemic, that a lot of people, it's a sanctuary for them to shut the door from family and other people, turn on hot water, maybe have a glass of wine, put in some bath bombs, whatever it is. But there are some incredible health benefits of a regular hot bath. And it was a Chinese study of 1,300 people. So what they basically said is that, you know, of course you relax and you, you get clean, but um, it's like heat therapy. It's similar to exercise where it helps heart, uh, stave off heart disease, high blood pressure, type two diabetes. In fact, everybody in the study had type two uh, diabetes, which some people call lifestyle diabetes. But I thought that was incredible that just increasing blood circulation, your body temperature, that it has these health benefits. It makes perfect sense. And quite frankly, I would not have given up the bath when Billy was a toddler, because that was my sanctuary. It was like, lock the door, tell my husband, I'm out for like an hour. Yeah. And you know, the magazine and all that. I mean, I do think it is a really good benefit. And especially during COVID right now, everybody has to find their thing. This has gone on so long. It's like, you've got to find some ways of breaking up the day and giving yourself that positivity, whether that's listening to your favorite music or going out for a run or taking a bath, you've got to find your jam. I absolutely agree. So it's our sound off question. It's how many baths do you take a year? <laughs> for Katrina, it's going to be big zip, big zero. A big she, zip. She doesn't but have water. I'm interested because most, yeah, most people take showers. So taking a bath is kind of a luxury. Yeah. 
Absolutely. But on this positivity note, because it's something that I always like to ask you, and, and you mentioned that this is going on long enough. Now students, you know, we thought it affected last year's senior. I have a senior in high school, so now it's affecting this mm -hmm. year's seniors. It's affecting all students, all of us. And I think people are sort of weary of it. And along with getting outside and exercising, what is there any mental tip that, that you use? Because you're a very positive person that you really either practice or just hang on to that kind of gets you through times like this. Yeah, well, you know, I've talked before about the fact that I always do meditation and my devotional in the morning. But I listened to a podcast the other day that was amazing. It was from a woman who had been in a concentration camps in Germany. And she was talking about trying to find the positive in everything. So like, if you can find the positive in that, that's amazing, right? Right. And she told this story about her and her sister when they had their heads shaved. And her sister looked at her and said, how do I look, right? And she looked at her and she said, oh, you're beautiful. You have beautiful eyes. And I could never see it before with all your hair in the way. Aww. You know, and yeah. that's like when you can find the positive in anything, I really think it's that whole thing about being grateful. And that's what people really need. To, it's, a, it's a mind switch. It's a mind switch to just finally go, okay, what can I see in this that makes me happy? And you know, this talking about the kids, an interesting thing that my son brought up, he said, you know, one thing about wearing masks is we can't judge each other on how we look. It's so true. And, and I was like, you know what? I didn't think about that. He goes, my teacher, one of my teachers took off their mask to take a drink of water. And I realized I hadn't seen his face the entire time we've been in school. And I imagined his lower part differently than he was when he took his drink. <laughs> And right. I was like, wow, that's amazing. It is. And I love what you, you said about not judging, but also the gratitude part. Because I heard a cool quote the other day that it's not a luxury gratitude. It's essential to being happy. And so I think it, it's something like if, if we're not practicing it, happiness isn't going to be an option. So I love that, Kat. Always a blast to talk to you. Thank you so much. And stick around because we'll read some sound offs later about baths. Okay, cool. <laughs> okay, love it. Thanks again.